internet hi bosun here uh as you're aware from last week's uh we got nearly there nearly there this time uh but we had this little broken cable issue but we're gonna get past that today so <coughs> excuse me <coughs> still got a bit of this cold left um I didn't manage to get around to ordering some fresh crimpable ones, but I did manage to find at Maplin a pack of these. These are a linker cable, 20 centimeter, five pack. There were some other various sizes, whatever, but they're all five packs. So it gave me the same amount of ends, whichever one I went for. These, unfortunately, at current time of filming, these were like $7.99, which was ow for a few little cables and some connectors, but it was so convenient just popping map, map lens and grab these and know I had them. So I've already taken one of them out of the box. Now these are pre-made cables. So what I'm going to have to do here is chop, cut a bit of solder and etc. But anyway, that's more kind of, I'm start moving now into the building part. So let's uh, stop this intro and waving this around and get into the actual build section. Okay, let's move into that section Lee. Right, okay, now we're into this section. I can carry on talking about this stuff. Anyway, like I said, I'm gonna cut, just chop one of the ends of these off, um, strip it, solder it, a bit of heat shrink, and basically tap that onto the end of this wire and we'll be done. So, um, I ain't gonna go through all the whole full close up of showing you doing that, because it's pretty much the same as you've seen other things. I'll show you the finished product, but um, yep. I better get on with this uh, and then after I've done this uh, I will be getting on with then the tidying up of all of the cables well first I'm going to test the uh, Z carriage works and that's be the first thing after that's done and once I'm happy the Z carriage works then I'll get on to tidying all the cables up so uh, time to actually start getting into this then radio Lee uh, better get started Okay, there we go. We can see we now have that repaired. All that's pretty much left to do is hook it up to the machine and see if it works. Okay, as you can probably just guess, I have just plugged that in and I'm now going to move Met Z axis. Oh, sounds alright going up. Not sounding so healthy going down, but it could be it's not entirely straight. I don't know why it's making the noise on the way down and not on the way up, but. Could just be a natural noise it's gonna make, but it's not a nice noise. One I haven't actually tested yet is the extruder. That is moving. Very slow, but I think that's the idea of that one. Well, that would appear that all of my axes are working. There's a little bit of noise on the uh, Z, sorry, on the downward motion, not so much on the the up, because on up, kind of makes the standard whine you expect from a 3D printer, but on the way down, Not such a pretty noise, but that's something I can look into a little bit later. 
But for now, I just want to move on, tidy up these cables, and uh, try and see if I can get this ready for its first print. Okay, let's carry on. Okay, um, now gonna, as I just said, tidy up these cables. But one thing I quickly thought I'd mention is I've moved all these axes to the the furthest away point. So the the Y bed all the way forward, the X carriage all the way over, and at the moment the uh, X Z axis actually all the way down. The idea being is I want to make sure on these here that I have enough cable length for the cables to get from where they need to. So I know that's the furthest over and because it's the, the cables come up to here that is the furthest it's going to need to be tugged that way these cables here the furthest forward they're going to tug is going to be that way um so yeah so that's the reason i've just done that just so if you're wondering why i've put everything in that position it was deliberate it wasn't just that's where they happen to be All right i'm going to carry on now Okay, I've gone around. I have now done all the cable tidying. It is looking a lot neater, a lot more presentable. Uh, there's still only uh, one little thing left to do, and uh, then I can go a couple of things. Sorry, a couple of things left to do, and then I can do a little um, spin round and show you it. First of all, one of the things I got to do is, as I said at the end of the other week, is putting this on and off. Now this is really so simple. On the top of the uh, print head and the top of the extru uh, extruder there, there's just these little push things and you literally take the pipe and push it in and then that's it, it locks in. Same here. And to release, you just push down on the blue bit and pull up on the, the plastic tubing. But to put it back in, there we go. That is literally it. Um, I know on their lovely images it shows this this cable going all up there with that. This is longer. I could just cut this shorter, uh, which I may just do. Uh, but at the moment until i see if it needs to be can get away with being sure i'm leaving it at that length there and i'm letting this kind of ro run free at the moment um but there's one more little thing i need to put on there so let's get some of these bits out of the way so i can do it now there is a couple of things i noticed moving these axes around when you move this if i just quickly show you before i think the x axes i've got a stop switch at that end I obviously haven't got a stop switch at this end but you've got to be careful because the fan on this side hits the framework here so i might have to put another switch on that side it does look like the board does support 
2x, 2y, 2z switch is obviously one for each end. So if that's the case, all I need to do is uh, source a couple more micro switches and I'm going to be sorted on that one. Um, but the other thing I've got to do here, take my rather dirty looking piece of glass. Let's clean it-ish. Pop that on there, let's see if it's got any particular way around it seems to go. I say probably that way. Although I could be wrong, because it does seem to be not square but rectangular. And there we go. Already now, in theory, to start printing. Ooh. Okay, I'm not going to have time to get that in this week's video. Sorry for leading you to a path there you thought I might have been going down. Uh, whether or not tonight I get a chance to try it out, I don't know. Uh, but i got a funny feeling I'm not going to have time to get that into this week's episode. If there suddenly changes, I would have cut out the, the bit I'm just saying now and moved into the printing it but if you're hearing this bit and obviously i didn't get to that point so let's that's us uh, let me do now a little run around with my um camera and let me show you how i've tidied up this cabling i'll just have to power this down while i do that okay you can see here we've got the ones from the fans and the hot end Nicely cable tied at the moment, coming up here and I have them currently just disappearing behind the extruder stepper motor there and then they come down and join the mass of wiring that's going to this board. Please forgive my focus. They're all coming down there and at the moment this bit is a bit of a nightmare. Here we have that switch which just comes down through that bit along with the stepper motor wire. Uh, but up here on the X carriage you've got the stop switch and then coming round to the stepper motor. And I've cable tied them to this bit here so they don't drop down and get caught under here or get between there and uh, the stop switch and then make sure you've got enough room on them here so it can go all the way up and all the way down because you don't want it to tight it so hot tighten it so tight that it'll go up to there and then can't go all the way up to the top where you want it next we've got a hotbed the cables coming off of there to there and again you want to pull these short enough that there's not tons of it flapping around in here but long enough that it can go there and then can also come all the way back here and not get caught up on the belt and then the ones from the power supply coming around here neatly cable tied together that's the power supply cables and the Z1 motor going out under there through the small hole at the bottom there round to that hole there cable tying them all together keeping them nice and neat is that focusing through the plastic no and they come under here and then they join up with a cable tidying of the stepper motor from here and then the stop switch there uh, so they're all following around there and into there this is the mess that is all of the extra length of cables. So that's giving you a quick run round. I know it's not the world's most neatest cabling job. I was going to originally use this black wrap round stuff they have, which is where you take it and you put that around the cable and make it all nice, super neat and what have you but I just can't help but feeling on this I might be ending up having to undo some bits from time to time 
tweak things play with things and if suddenly i need to do change a motor or something like that it's going to be a pain in the butt enough to um <coughs> cut off all these cable ties uh, along one of the particular routes to free up the wire and then lay the other wire in and do it all back up as i go uh to then i have to unwrap it all as well first no thanks uh I think I'll stick with just uh, giving myself the minimum amount of work in the future as possible. So there you can see, I've kind of got it up and running now. It's kind of ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can do some printing at some point very, very, very soon. Uh, next week's video should have some printing in. As long as nothing goes drastically wrong with this, the way my luck's been going, next week you should be seeing some printing going on. Let's go into the outro. Well, there we go. Um, that is it now basically built. Okay, another little quick thing. Um, some parts I did get with this were these. Uh, I'll put a picture up on up here now of them. Um, I have four of these uh, bits of uh, acrylic and I have absolutely no idea what they're for i have line, tried lining up with all of the various different holes i can on this thing and they do not the two holes that are in here do not line up with anything on there that i can find so i have absolutely no idea what these four things are for if you do know please let me know down in the description i was hoping to figure this out myself but Curiosity is now just getting the better of me. I just want to know what these are for. So if you can pop down what you think they are in the description, or if you, nobody knows what they are, you know, what I could probably do with them. At first, I thought they could have been like for putting this up, but none of the holes line up with this. So it's not for the control panel and it's not for anything else on here that I could figure out. So, because I did get with sent with mine uh, four other print heads for doing like a quad head printing and what have you. But it was literally just the four heads. That's all I was sent. So I have no idea what these are for. Because the other heads are... Uh, are here. So I have spare heads at least. I've got four of these. Um, not quite as nice as what I can tell of that head. But... They're four print heads with all heat canister and uh, thermistor on and everything. So at first I thought it was for these. I'll even put a picture of one of these up here as well. Just so you can have a little look at one. Um, so uh, later date there might be some kind of... I think this control board might do dual extrusion. I have to double check on it. But if it does, um, although there's only one extruder motor, stepper motor connector. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to have a little look. If not, maybe another board at a later date. But anyway, that's enough of these bits here. Let's put all this away. So I've still got those mysteries to figure out, but there's pl plenty more fun to come with this. Uh, hopefully next week we should be seeing the first prints on this. So, and then I've got to start figuring out things like how to calibrate it to make it even more accurate and what have you. But at least next week, I just want to at least be showing off some of my first test prints. And when I first get this to do its first ever print, I'll have a camera pointing at it. Don't you worry. Anyway, that's, uh, that's me for this week. I hope you like this. If you did like this, please like and subscribe. Um, if this is the first video of mine you've watched. Uh, quickly check back in my library there you'll see the complete build leading up to this point um, and you'll see the, the few f uh, failure points I've had on this and uh, the ways I've got around it and what have you and um, I hope to see you next week like I said and if you want to catch me on social media you can grab me down here at iBoson uh, Twitter is where I mainly hang out there is Facebook and what have you but Twitter is the main place you can catch me anyway I will see you next week Bye! 
So, if you want to know what this camera that normally filming me looks like, there it is. There's the camera that normally looks at me up there. My sound recorder there. Just getting the audio right now. My boom mic. There we go. That's a little studio tour. Impromptu. 